Do you find videos of people vacuuming up crud in cabinets satisfying? Well, I do too, so shall we? I'm Mike Dimas, and this is Pinball Shenanigans. Deny everything. Trust no one. Welcome back to another episode of Sega X-Files. If you've been watching the first part of the series, if you checked that out, you will have known that this wasn't on legs last time around. In the last video, I basically set this up on the pump cart, plugged it in, turned it on, found out that there was some resetting issues on the CPU, which I can pretty comfortably say must be resolved because... I had this turned on for like, I don't know, six hours on Saturday night or something. Four hours, at least. And it never reset. And we played. I never did add credits. There was 22 credits when I first turned it on. I played a couple test games. So I see that there's two credits left. So we must have played. Actually, you know what? I think we played a six, two six-player games. Oh, there's a five-player game. But we did actually play a six-player game as well. Anyway, we put that many games on it. At least 11. And it never reset. So, I think that problem is resolved. So, I'm pretty stoked about that. But the trick was that I was even able to get this thing on legs. And the idea was I wanted to get this set up for Saturday so we could play it. But, reset issue was one. And then the filing cabinet was the other issue. The optos in front of it weren't registering making the kind of main toy in the game completely not usable, not playable, non-functional. So I wanted to get that going before I put this on legs. And I managed to do that, but I hacked it pretty good. Um, before I get to that, here, here's my hack. That's part of it. That is the actual filing cabinet opto. So I'll leave with that for a second. But I just wanted to say... Thank you to, there's so many awesome comments that I've been getting, you know, I, I don't acknowledge uh, enough, but you shenaniganders out there are, are, you know, sending lots of love and kind words and, and I appreciate it. So quick shout out to a few commenters on the last video. I'll just say Jet Rules, he's starting his own channel, so you're going to have to check that out um, of Pinball Adventures and Repairs. Uh, Mark Jackson... We got Dave Weston, Tilting T, Smitty, the Nickifer who bought Henry's old X-Files that I was mentioning in the last video. So that's pretty cool. Um, we got Mr. TBA, Damon Huffman, um, lots of regulars in the chat here. Yerf Dog, Ace of Spades, Expresso Mechanics TV, Vernon Williams, Jimmy Wilkes, Shirax, Aiden Palumbo. So I just wanted to acknowledge all you shenanigans. I'm going to try and say that three times fast. Uh, and to say thank you, kind words, awesome comments. And yeah, so back to this. So yeah, I actually removed the filing cabinet optos in order to get the filing cabinet to work. Now, how do you figure I did that? Um, well, I will show you one moment. Quick little side note. There's this trend that seems to happen on every machine that I bust out of storage and work on. I tend to find one single coin in the machine, and it's usually a quarter. Uh, I don't know uh, what, what it is, but that just seems to be this recurring trend that I've had. And uh, Damon mentioned, hey, you didn't find a coin in this game. So I promised that I would actually take a closer look and just see if I overlooked and I got my, can keep my tradition alive and find one quarter in the machine. You know, sometimes stuff gets jammed up in these coin mechs here. Oh, I guess I'm missing a coin mech, but that one doesn't even want to open on me. That's a real old style, uh, Coin mech that's a little more modern and yeah you know what 
it looks like this machine is going to break that trend. No quarter in this machine. I also had to remove this dude because every time I lifted and closed the play field, he was starting to like twist and turn and um, get caught in the action. So I think that's probably how he got broken in the first place. And you can see that someone tried to do something. Maybe they lost the original screw and uh, put in like five, one, I don't know, maybe that's more than five washers, but put in, let's see, yeah, five washers to you know, not thread the screw too deep because it didn't need to go so deep and probably can't go so deep. Anyway, this guy I had to remove. So it just looks like that over there now. And there's the other piece. So I'm gonna have to figure out a way to try and repair that. Um, it looks like missing a screw there. And it looks like a wood screw coming in from underneath the ramp there. So I'm not sure if that's factory or not. Okay, so. How did I get the filing cabinet to work even though I removed the optos? I will show you. All right, so this is the area in front of the filing cabinet right here. And you can see this hole here and this hole here is where those optos feed into. So um, I disconnected those. But what we did know is that the optos for the magnet, here's the magnet here. We knew that that set of optos was working. So I had to cut a couple wire clips here and here, and I disconnected the connectors from this guy. And I plugged them into the magnet optos. So, because these connections are for the filing cabinet and now that I plug them in here into a working set of optos I put it in switch test and instead of it saying magnet opto it now says filing cabinet opto so let's go into switch test I can show you that quickly for fun okay switch test so if I swipe my finger in front of the opto, instead of it saying magnet opto, it says filing cabinet opto. So I completely hacked the system. But what I also found out during gameplay is that, I don't know if it was every time, but sometimes this would also activate the magnet. So it was doing both the filing cabinet and the magnet. Um, I will uh, show you the filing cabinet action. Okay, so um, let's uh, pick Mulder. And I'm just going to show you the action of the filing cabinet here. Let's see if the magnet triggers too. So, here we go. Uh, if I zoom out, I can get the DMD, but voila. Um, did you see the magnet trigger? I didn't really look for that. I was just looking at the filing cabinet. Let's try again. See, the magnet didn't seem to go there. And then the last shot into the top of the filing cabinet. And just like that, you get into a multi-ball. Filing cabinet goes back up. And multi-ball begins loud and obnoxious right now. This is not an easy multi-ball. Um, you have to hit. I'm going to zoom out a bit here. I managed to pull this off one time during uh, our playing on Saturday. Left ramp once. Left ramp twice. Then right ramp for double jackpot. I said right ramp for double jackpot. Right ramp Oh, interesting. That switch doesn't seem to be working all of a sudden. Let's try that again. It worked during my one game because I hit the super jackpot, which was the filing cabinet. So, oh, double jackpot is lit again after only one shot. Okay, one of those ramp switches is not working. So anyway, I was just going to show you that, yeah, you hit the right ramp and then it lights the 
filing cabinet. Oh, did you see that? Magnet. So, it's interesting how it uh, triggers the magnet during multi-ball and not otherwise. Maybe that's just the way it normally is, but... So, before I, like, I don't know, blow a fuse or something, like... It's obviously not designed to operate both the magnet and the filing cabinet at the same time. Maybe it's too much voltage or amperage or something, and that's why they're on separate optos, but that is the hack that I performed that enabled this feature to work, uh, and then allowed us to actually play some games on Saturday. And I can say, well, other than this switch issue that I just learned about, there really was no issues to speak of. I didn't notice any, any problems whatsoever, really. Except the right flipper was being a little bit kind of like sketchy. You'd hold the flipper button down. You'd hold the flipper button in and the flipper would come back down. But I cleaned the cabinet switch and that seems to have resolved that. Anyway, so that's uh, where I'm at with this game. The next thing to do is to um, try and repair the filing cabinet opto. I think I just got to change the receiver LED on that board and I don't know if I have any of those in stock so I'm gonna have to look up that in the manual see what kind of LEDs it takes but other than that uh, I'll probably uh, check on those switches this E switch I never did address that it was a little bit sticky but it never was an issue on Saturday so and then I guess I might start tearing this bad boy apart, so we'll see what happens. All right, I got the game and switch test, and here's our right ramp enter switch. Push that in, and that registers. Now the right ramp exit switch, that also works. But, uh, the rule of thumb in testing switches on play fields is don't use your fingers, actually use the ball. So let's try this switch, let's see if you can uh, get both display and switch in the frame here. There we go. I don't have the volume up very loud, so, but you can see that works. more time no problem now let's do this ramp exit switch try and get everything in the frame here and look at that we got nothing so that's uh, you know when people say test the switches with the ball that's why because you know you can pull this up further with your finger, then the ball's natural height will, um, yeah, so use ball, not finger, a uh, little switch adjustment on that should remedy that. Hey, I didn't mean to hit that button. All right, little switch adjustment and right ramp exit switch now works. And so do the trough switches. Okay, so even with the machine on legs, when I hook the playfield up to my little strap, I do have very good access to the bottom of the playfield. So I was a little concerned I was going to have to take it back off the legs and put the machine back on my pump cart, but I think I have enough access here that. I won't have to do that, which is pretty sweet. Um, I'm going to have to tidy up some wiring. I did, like I said, clip a uh, wire tie or two, and I'm going to have to do some cable management at some point. But once I remove all these ramps, I'm going to have to probably clip lots more zip ties. So I will do that as I go. But... Yeah, I think that's pretty sweet. I do not have to take the machine off of legs. I can access 
all this back here I think uh, before I go too much further I'm going to vacuum out the play field and uh, reattach this broken ground strap figure out where that's supposed to go um, there's the other end but is it supposed to tie in anywhere else or I'll figure that out um, vacuum out the front here and then I'll start uh, yeah get some cobwebs out of the corners it's a little it's a little cobwebby I don't know if that's from the original owner's shop or me storing it in my basement uh, probably not so much but it don't matter it all needs to get vacuumed out and yeah so I'll do that what is this is that anything what about this are we missing a knocker I don't see any screws in the bottom here and is this the original speaker I mean I've never really seen a blue speaker before we've got a screw here and here and here but nowhere else so that's kind of weird uh, I feel like that might not be the original speaker uh, as long as it works I'm happy with it and it fits the right ohms which I'm sure it is probably eight ohms I'm guessing okay so yeah, that's where I'm at. I can keep this guy on legs. Aha! There it is. I found the one coin in the machine. Before I started vacuuming all this up, I wanted to bust out my magnet and get any uh, parts that might be down there that might be useful. And look what I found. Actually, I don't even know what it is. I thought it was a penny at first, but... It is a no cash value token. So it wasn't my traditional quarter, but boom, found my coin after all. Do you find videos of people vacuuming up crud in cabinets satisfying? Well, I do too. So shall we? Okay, I just uh, went over this with my brush attachment, got up some of the crud, but uh, I gotta wipe it down and everything. But I've noticed a few things here that I had never noticed before. One is these yeah, um, sets of wires here. They really, ah, here, see that hole there? These need to be secured to the back box so that there's not so much strain. Like this is a pretty heavy cable of wires here and I got to find maybe where the old hole is and secure these so they're not pulling down on the wires in the circuit board. It's just adding unnecessary strain and stress. So I've got to do some cable management down here. This actually, this tube here looks like it could afford to be I think this is actually supposed to go up into the head a little bit to protect these wires from getting um, chewed up when you're folding the head up and down. So this whole sleeve needs to go up and probably this one too. So I need to deal with that. Next, I found yet another broken ground strap. Someone was very aggressive with all the wires in here. I don't know what is going on. We got wires outside of cable straps here it's a big giant disaster really oh and look ah oh, interesting more evidence of some work a diode from some switch or something and the other thing i don't know if you noticed this but i looked at it but it never dawned on me we have okay take a look at this corner here painted black corner uh, unpainted corner of wood 
with, uh, yeah, a not so factory look. And then also, got a piece of like one by one all along the side of this cabinet, going way back there. And same thing on this side. So, ah, uh, maybe that is reason for the ground straps being broken is that it looks as though this cabinet was smashed at one point and someone came in to repair it. Maybe not smashed, but the bottom was probably falling out or or something. Because it doesn't really look like from the outside anything bad is going on. What about underneath? Do we see any evidence of anything going on there? Uh, I see evidence of like some spider nest Ew. but um what about the inside lip there it doesn't look too bad but that definitely looks like some aftermarket reinforcement going on there so i will uh i'm perfectly fine with it it's doing its job there's another nut here but I do have to deal with ground straps and these uh, cable management. Uh, I gotta do operation cable management. Anyway, I'm gonna continue to clean the cabinet. Okay, things are slightly better than what they were before. I wiped down the cabinet. It's a little cleaner. This loose ground strap here, I believe is for the back right leg and it is not actually Resecured to this leg T, so it's pretty much doing nothing. So I just kind of tucked it here, and yeah, that's whatever. And the other um, ground strap, these two pieces I just connected with a screw here, and that just carries over the ground from the back of the cabinet to the front, which does this front leg and this metal bracket and up here it goes to the receiver bar and I believe the coin door so that carries the ground from the back to the front basically so that's fine I'll clean up the front of the cabinet next and oh yeah I did a little bit of wire management with the wire sleeves this wire was pretty much completely out of this guy so I fed that up uh, slid the machine back so I have a little bit of room to open the, the back box so I have a little bit of access. There's nothing in this uh, wire clip here so I kind of brought up the whole harness and you know it's kind of a nest of wires there but it's completely relieved the, any possible strain. And then I pulled this guy up. So he's happy there. The idea is really to get a screw in that little clip there. And then this, also this mini sleeve here. So it's a little better than it was. Not perfect, but all right, I can live with that. All right, I got rid of most of the crud in the middle of the cabinet and the front. Looks much better. I threw in a screw right here because the ground strap was just loose and now you can't get electrocuted as easily from the front right leg yay then i also saw this not sure why this zip tie is here but i think i want to remove it because i uh, don't imagine that's original never seen that before i think it's someone's idea of a fix but is it really fixing something i guess i'll find out i know sometimes when you change these bulbs in the start buttons launch buttons these can be a pain in the ass to get in and out but i'm not really sure that i see any use or purpose for this guy so We'll see what happens, but seems fine. I don't think that's going to cause any problems. Okay, so just dawdling around with the kind of 
simple stuff, vacuuming and cleaning and wire management, which is slightly better than it was. So I think it might be time to research this type of opto. All right, I found the assembly in the manual online. And what I'm looking for is 2A or 2B, but it just takes me to the part number for the whole board. Um, all I want to change is the LED itself. I don't want to change the whole board if necessary. Um, this here, I believe, will do the trick for two bucks at Marco. So I am just going to get confirmation that that is true because the Stern LEDs work different than the Williams LEDs. Um, I don't know all the technical definitions, but it says somewhere here there's some, some good information that I found. Even um, Opto technical overview for um, Maverick specifically, but talks about like visually inspect the transmitter. Is it glowing red? Yes, mine was. Um, and if it is, then it's okay. If it's not, go there. Um, this is short hop opto. The one that, that I have is actually a long hop opto, so I'm not sure. But anyway, I'm finding some info. I think I'm narrowing it down to this guy here, but I'm pretty sure I do not have one of those in stock, so I'm going to have to order that. Anyway, in the meanwhile, I will um, work on something else. All right, I got a table set up over there for uh, stripping the play field. It's going to happen soon. I'm not sure if it will on this episode or not, and I may just putter around doing little dumb things until I take the play field plunge. Like I was just messing around with some wires that were kind of getting caught up on stuff, and then I thought it's time to deal with my sticky switch here in the upper rollover lane, and it is my E switch. What does it even spell back there? E, B, E, E, B, E. Okay. I don't know what that reference is to. Am I missing something? Is there... No? Okay. Let's just... E, B, E. I'll try and show you. E, B, and... E. Anyway, um, I haven't quite figured out what is causing it to stick, so I pulled it out and then I noticed that, I don't know if this is the reason, I thought the wire itself was just rubbing against the wood, but check out my little yellow button there. Let's see. Hold on. My yellow button is being sticky, but... Not doing a very good job demonstrating that because also the switch itself is just slow to rise. Like if you look at the other switch here, it just springs back so nice. Has a nice click to it. This is not that. It is slow and gummy. So, I may replace the micro switch body or the whole switch. I don't know. We'll see. I may just try and clean with some Windex in the little button zone there. But I might have one of these exact switch replacements. So, sometimes it just get old and gummy, but I'll have a look. I'll report back. All right, that did not work. You can see the switch is stuck down. Um, not happy with that. So I went looking and I found that style switch, but it's got the wrong shape and I don't know if that's gonna impede the ball or not. It really shouldn't. I probably could just pop this in there and it should be fine. You would think that you could just 
easily enough um, remove the micro switch and put in a new one, but I tried that once before. I didn't have much luck. These rivets are like, or whatever they are. Come on, why don't you focus? Come on, let's go like this then. Those guys, see how they press on there? They like to go on, but they don't like to come off. Unless someone knows of a secret. And then you got to try and reuse those or have new ones. Uh, so you don't want to like damage them while removing them. But yeah, trying to replace just the arm. I don't think I'll have a lot of luck. But see how springy this is and nice. That's what I need. So I did find that they're pretty readily available. You know, 11 bucks at Marco. So, worst comes to worst, I will just grab one of those, but, or even install this guy. I mean, this is designed for a ball to roll over it, just because it has a different shape. It should be fine. So, I may go that route. We'll see, but I'm not happy with the way it's functioning now. So, put this on the back burner, put that on the back burner, and uh, move on to something else. All right, so I'm starting to prep for Playfield disassembly. I'm labeling all of the underside connectors with random letters and symbols and hieroglyphs there is a lot of connectors to deal with oh i missed one right here okay so where's my marker where did it go did i put it back i thought i was done i should never put the sharpie down always have this on hand so there's so many connectors there you're sure to miss one and like I said, I just do random letters and numbers. So let's do, um, we'll do P, R, P, R. That is really bad. But I'll know which uh, connector that goes to. And that stands for Pinball Reborn. Shout out. Okay, I think I got all of my connectors disassembled. Actually, I can pretty much count on the fact that I missed one or two. As soon as I start pulling out one of these ramps and it doesn't want to give, then uh, then I'll know. But I think it is time. You know what I need to do, possibly, is employ the uh, carry Hardy trick where you put a little clamp on the side of each rail and lift the playfield and put it on top of those clamps so you can access the back a little better because the way it is now I can't but I can just slide out the play field too so uh I may not need to do that trick but that's a really cool trick and I'm gonna try that one of these days so I'm not gonna like record this in real time and then um speed it up because just not gonna but I will uh start removing some parts and then I'll uh update you from time to time but yeah I guess it is playfield disassembly time. Okay, so I'm not sure. I'm going to try something a little funky here. There's all these layers of ramps. I removed what I believe are all the screws for the ramps. So they're loose fitting. But like this... Oh, this just came out. Okay. Uh, I think that... I was going to try and take out all the ramps in one shot. I'm not sure that I should do that because that piece was kind of connecting the whole thing together. But now that I was able to remove that, I may not do that after all. But the thing is, like, how did they assemble this? Because the nut is on top and the screw is on the bottom. And same goes for this side. So how do you get a screw under there like a phillips screw to hold the screw in while you're tightening the nuts so i thought i wonder if this was all pre-assembled in one big piece and then they laid it into the play field for manufacturing so i thought if that's the case then maybe i'll just remove it the same way because you know when i gotta tighten this nut i gotta somehow hold the screw in place and i was doing that with my finger and turning on the nut and it wasn't working very well. Anyway, I think I'm going to try it anyway. 
that's my theory. My theory is that that whole set of ramps was pre-assembled and then installed in one shot. It may be wrong, it's probably wrong, but for fun, let's see if I can remove this entire slew of ramps in one go here. I kind of liked my cross brace here. That was giving me stability. Oh, shit. Shit's falling apart now. All right. What have I done? Okay, you know what? I think without my cross brace, I'm not going to attempt that anymore. Okay, I need to remember where all these wires are fed. And that guy here is now free. So, this is two ramps in one. And we are free. All right. Now this giant ramp, in theory, should come out. We've got a couple wires to feed out here. There we go. There's that. And one wire here. Oh, then these two guys here may require a little bit of attention because there we go one the other one is a larger size connector I don't know I might need to remove the plastic to get this out or kind of just manipulate it out there we go that is free wow okay I thought like whitewater had a lot of ramps I don't know if you could hear me very well I don't have a microphone um, anyway, I thought Whitewater had a lot of ramps, but X-Files is definitely up there. Look at this mess. But I'm pretty sure I'm the only human being that has ever attempted to shop this machine out because all the hardware, all the screws are there. I didn't really notice anything missing or wrong screws or anything like that. It is all unhacked, so... I think this is the first shop job this machine will have ever seen. And you know what I think I want to do is, that guy's beat up, is order a rubber kit from Titan Pindle, the green glow-in-the-dark style rubber kit. Because I don't really want to do white. That's just kind of boring. For a game like this, I think it needs the green glow-in-the-dark style rubber kit. So I'll have to place that order maybe tonight. And then uh, we'll have to wait on that to arrive. Obviously, in the meanwhile, i got lots to keep me busy. Remove the rest of the stuff from the play field. Clean it. LED the GI. I could even do all the inserts. But that is just the tipping point there. So ramps removed. All right, I think I've gone as far as I want to go for tonight. I've got the play field stripped down pretty good. It's definitely uh, a lot of screws and nuts and layers and posts and washers. Um, you can actually see the art now under the ramps. You got these, I don't know, bed bugs, <laughs> mites. Uh, but yeah, so I've got it pretty much down to the wood. There's probably some more. You know, I might remove a couple of these rails because they're easy enough to do for when I do some cleaning. Pop bumpers. Yeah, I gotta get rid of these bulbs. I've got all the general illumination bulbs removed and most of the rubber. I had to take a lot of photos because there's just so many 
things that could catch me up when I'm reassembling. Like, for example, you got to be mindful. Like, this plastic has three different size spacers. And if you get them in the wrong order, then this won't go on right. And then that's meant to divert the ball off the plastic so you don't get stuck balls. And if you put it in the wrong order, you might get stuck balls and then have to disassemble all of this again in order to access this. So you got to be very particular. Like, oh, thank God those two are the same size. Because I didn't uh, look at that. But, you know, there is a million... Almost everything had these um, spacer posts. More here, more here, two different ones here, another one 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 here. Like this is um, going to be a bit of a challenging puzzle to put back together again. And then all these guys, there is a lot of spots where if you're not paying close, close attention, you might um, forget where a rubber goes. That's why I haven't taken all these uh, posts off yet, because I'm just going to replace them one for one. One here, 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 here. I'll go with some cool, probably green color on those guys. Anyway, my point is that it's going to be a bit of a challenge to put back together again without uh, screwing anything up. But I did, take lot, <laughs> I did take lots of photos, as one should, and that should be good enough. If not, then I can always, um, you know, ask for help on Pinside or use the X-Files fan club thread. I'm sure there's lots of photos of uh, Playfield teardowns on there. And I'm going to actually go to that thread maybe tonight and kind of see what other people have done with their X-Files and maybe get some ideas of what I want to do. I'm not going to go too crazy. I'm going to probably replace the clear posts. I don't think I'm going to go green. I think I'll just go with clear because green on green might be too much green. Uh, but yeah, see what other cool mods and tweaks and things are out there. But yeah. Pretty happy with the progress tonight. I have got some work cut out for me. Shall be fun, shall be interesting, but that is what it is. So, all right. I think I'm going to end this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys later.